I am here at Laconia Public Library for this month's Family Craft Time. So this month we are making something that I am super excited to make because I think they're so cute. This month we're making little pom-pom sheep. We're making these sheep because there's a saying that goes, March comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb. So we're making sheep because we're really hoping March goes out like a lamb. And actually it's gonna be super warm this week. In a couple of days it's gonna be 60 degrees. So it's definitely gonna feel like it's going out like a lamb because a lamb is peaceful and calm and not crazy and windy and snowy, right? <laughs> so we're gonna make sheep today or you can make an indoor snowball fight and I will show you how. So we have kits here at the library that include all of the things you would need to make this project. If you would still like to come pick one up here at the library, we do still have a few available, not too many, I think maybe three or four. So if you would like a kit to learn how to make or to give you all the supplies to make a pom-pom sheep, then give us a call or you can email us and let us know you'd like to pick a kit up. So I'm gonna show you what was in the kit in case you would still like to make this but not pick up a kit. So we have a little instruction sheet, which you can also get by going to our website. You can go to laconialibrary.org and in the children's section of our website, we have instruction sheets for all of the different crafts that we have made in the last, I don't know, eight or nine months or so. So this will come in your package, but you can always look that up online as well. We've also got a ball of yarn. We have a pom-pom maker. These are so much fun to use. I'm gonna show you how to use them. They are just silly little contraptions, but they make perfect pom-poms. So I'm gonna show you how to use that. I also have a sheep face, some sheep legs, which are pipe cleaners. This is just felt. And then some little googly eyes. We have two googly eyes. I also included some glue dots. So these will help if you don't have a better kind of glue, these will help to glue the pieces onto your sheep. If you have a glue gun, that will work much better. So I have a glue gun here that I'm letting heat up and I'll show you what I'm gonna use that for. But the glue dots hopefully <laughs> will work. If they don't, I highly recommend a glue gun, which definitely use parent supervision for that one. I also have a pair of scissors, which were not included in the kit, but Hopefully you have those at home. I am using very, very sharp scissors because they cut through the yarn better. So I think that's everything that's in our kit. So let's get started on making these pom-poms. So you're gonna grab your ball of yarn and your pom-pom maker. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit closer so you can see. So here's the pom-pom maker. It should be in a circle with all the pieces together to start. So the first thing you're gonna do is open up one of the ends and make sure that the two sections of this end, see it's just like this, are close together and even. All right, so we are gonna grab some yarn. I have been making pom-poms at home like crazy because it's just fun and I want to do some decorating in the children's room with them. So, because pom-poms just make me think of spring and you can do, you can make tons of these. If you have yarn at home, I only gave you enough yarn for for a sheep, but if you have yarn at home, you can keep your pom-pom maker and use, use it to make tons of pom-poms. So let's get started with that little amount. I just, I just took some yarn off the ball because otherwise it's gonna roll all over the place, which I'm sure it'll still do because I'm not good at keeping my yarn where it belongs. So you're gonna take your pom-pom maker, you're gonna put your yarn here on the top, just kind of hold it down with your finger. So it'll be kind of in the middle there down just a little bit all right so we're gonna put the yarn in the middle right here and then you're gonna kind of hold it down with your finger because then we're just gonna start winding it around and until you catch the yarn you just need to hold it so there we go I don't need to hold it anymore and I'm just winding and winding and winding and winding I'm gonna be winding quite a bit on these bigger pom-pom makers. There are small pom-pom makers too, and those make much faster pom-poms. So you can see I've got it around the bottom part of this. Oops, there you go. So we're just winding, and we're gonna be winding quite a bit. <laughs> I will say that 
pom-poms are so much fun for lots of different crafts. We're making sheep today, but you can make, oh, we've made bumblebees here at the library. You can make a lion or a cat or a dog. You can make so many different animals with different colors. You can put two different colors on the pom-pom maker at once. So you have, um, you can make an animal with different colors or you can just make fun, brightly colored pom-poms. I just think they're just fun. You can throw them. They're like little balls that don't hurt. <laughs> so we are just going to keep winding and winding and winding and winding. This is the longest part of this craft. It's a very easy craft, but the winding part takes quite a while. So you can see I'm still going. I'm going to keep going until the yarn is kind of even across the bottom here, which as you can probably tell, it takes a while. I like to use little pom-pom makers at my house because they take a lot less time. So, and when I get done making the small pom-poms at home to bring into the library, I'm gonna make a garland with them. So you make a bunch of little pom-poms and then you get a needle and some yarn and you can just thread the pom-poms onto the yarn and make a long string of pom-poms and they're really fun for decorating. I have one at home that I made right after Christmas time so that I could have kind of a wintry theme pom-pom garland but now I'm gonna make one for spring because I just think they're a fun decoration. All right we're getting closer. Do you see it kind of looks like a caterpillar now doesn't it? But we're still gonna make it almost flat all the way across. You don't want it to be too, too thick because then it's going to be hard to cut through, but you can probably see why we want to make it sort of thick. So we're going to end this. I just finished. I've got it pretty flat on the bottom there. I'm going to bring my yarn up here and I'm going to cut it with the scissors. Okay, so let me show you what I've got here. So we've got the yarn. Oops. Just like that. You can see that little piece of yarn is sticking up. And then we're gonna close this. So you don't have to worry about those anymore. It's all closed and ready to go. So now you open your other side and then you're gonna do the exact same thing on that side. I'm gonna get some other yarn here because I'm not sure I brought quite enough yarn for this giant pom-pom maker. I think I gave some of you these really big ones and some a slightly smaller one, so the slightly smaller one might be a little bit quicker to use, but these are so much fun. And hopefully you have some yarn at home so you can keep playing and making pom-poms after this. So we're going to start again. So remember we put it across the top here, but hold it down with a finger until you get it started. And then you start winding. And then eventually you're going to catch the part you were holding down with your finger so you don't have to do that anymore. All right. So we're going to wind and wind and wind again. And I promise after this comes the really fun part, but I, this is fun too. I think it's kind of relaxing. I like to do, I like to do crafts even though I'm not a very creative person. I like to do crafts because they calm me down and they keep me busy at night when I'm at home and I'm watching TV or something before bed. I like to knit or make pom-poms because they just keep my hands busy and just give me something to do so that I, I don't know, <laughs> so that I keep busy. But also I end up with something pretty in the end, right? All right, I need to unwind some more of my yarn. I'm not sure I have the same color yarn. I'm using two different kinds of yarn and I think I got two different colors. See, one is a little bit whiter than the other, but that's okay. It doesn't matter, our sheep will still be happy. And after this, I think I wanna make some more animals, not today, but I want to use my pom-pom maker to try some different animals because they really come out very cute and you can make a whole little zoo full of animals or a farm if you want to make farm animals you could make a cow and you could use what colors would you use to make a cow i would use maybe black and white but you could make a brown cow there are brown and white cows you can make a purple cow even though I've never seen one in real life. You could still make one, that would be fun. 
Well, the Day family likes crafts too. I know, they're so much fun. It's just such a calming thing to do and I love ending up with something pretty in the end. All right, how are you guys doing? Is it just, I'm hoping this is making sense, these instructions so far. This is kind of one of those little contraptions that I didn't even see until I was a grown up, so I didn't know they existed, but I love them. You can make pom poms, oops, I got a little knot here. You can make pom poms many different ways, but for some reason my brain does not work that way and every time I've tried to make pom-poms on my fingers or on cardboard it just has not worked out for me so I like these because they take a lot of that work out of it and they're just they're just very easy to use so if if you want me to walk through any of the other steps let me know or if you want to come into the library sometime <laughs> and have a better tutorial let me know too and I will try to make that happen you know, it's hard to get too close to people right now, but I can tell you from six feet away how to do it. So we are getting close. There's my caterpillar. My caterpillar is almost a half circle. This guy is going to be thick. It's going to be a very big pom-pom sheep. Actually, I think it's going to be the size of this one, so pretty good size. Alrighty. Almost done. I'm winding this pretty tightly. Um, if you do it looser, your pom-pom pieces, like the yarn pieces, will not be so close together. And um, I just wanted mine to be a little bit tighter. So we're all done. And I've got this piece of yarn still attached. I'm just going to hold my finger there. I'm going to cut the little piece of yarn right there so it's sticking up. And then I'm going to close this side of the pom-pom maker. So we're all done with this part. You can see it's, well, the lighting's a little bit weird here, but everything is tight on there. So now we get to do the fun part. Well, I think it's the fun part. We're going to cut. So we're going to take our scissors and cut all the way up through the middle of this. Let's see if I can do this sideways a little bit and show you guys. So I just started right there. These are very sharp scissors. They're called sewing scissors. So they cut very well. Not all scissors cut this well, so it'll make it a little bit harder to cut. But if you have sewing scissors, that's the best kind. So that's what I've got so far. I'm gonna get the bottom here because I missed that before. So there we go. I'm just gonna keep cutting all the way through in the middle. All right, so there we go. One side is done. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing to this side. So we're gonna start here. Just made my first little cut. And then all the way up. I'm gonna get this little section down here that I missed before. There we go. And then we're gonna cut all the way up. If I'm making faces, <laughs> it's because it's hard to cut through this yarn with these scissors. Even these scissors that are awesome scissors. All right. Okay. So, you're going to leave it closed still. We're going to keep everything just the way it is, but this is how it should look. Your yarn should be all away from this inside, inside section here. There shouldn't be any yarn in the middle. Okay? So then we are going to, if I can find it, oh, we are gonna grab a piece of yarn about this long. So it's about that long. It can be, it can be a little longer, a little shorter. You don't have to measure it. But we're gonna take our pom-pom maker and we're gonna wind the yarn through the middle part. So right here, right in the middle. Can you see that? Right through the middle. It's gonna go through this section and through this section and all the way you wanna pull it tight so it comes out to the other side, okay? All right, and then once they're on the other side, you're gonna tie a knot. So we're gonna tie it. So we've got it, move this down a little bit. We've got it like this. We're just gonna tie a little knot and tie it tight. Okay, because this is what's going to hold your pom-pom together. Then I'm just going to turn it around and I'm going to tie another knot. 
And then to make sure we're nice and as tight as we can be, I'm gonna pull it through these middle parts again, right up to the other side, and then I'm gonna tie, oops, I'm gonna tie another two knots, just to make it as secure as we can. One more knot right here, and we're gonna pull it tight, tight, okay? All right, so once that's all tied, we're gonna cut this off kind of even. Let's see if I can do this so you can see it. It's gonna be even with the other pom-pom pieces. So like right there, Ooh. okay. All right, this is the fun part, ready? Your pom-pom is done, it's all secure, everything's tied off. Got a little extra piece there. And we're ready to take it out of the pom-pom maker. So. We're gonna take these little parts right here and we're gonna pull it out. It's okay, your pom-pom will stay together. If you tied it in the middle, it will stay together. So there we go. Pulled out one side and then here's the other side. You're gonna look for those little, those little feet sticking out and we're gonna pull out the other side and then you're gonna pull your pom-pom maker right apart. Right at the middle, maybe. <laughs> My pom-pom just went flying, so I have to go get it. But your pom-pom maker should be apart like that. You can always put it back together. There's a little metal piece that goes into the hole. So you can put it back together so you can reuse it as many times as you want. I have to go get my pom-pom. I will be right back. <laughs> okay, so it's a little bit uneven. Not too bad at all because these pom-pom makers make perfect pom-poms. But to make it even, I just sort of go like this or you can bounce it around a little bit. And then I look for pieces that are sticking up just a little, and then I cut them off. Just give it a little trim. I always think of it as giving the pom-pom a little haircut. A couple little pieces sticking up there. Might not be a perfect circle, but that's okay. All right. I think that looks good for my sheep. So, Here's our pom-pom. Now, if you want to do an indoor snowball fight, you're done. This is it. You just needed to make a pom-pom and now you can throw it at somebody. <laughs> and it's super soft and it won't hurt them and you don't have to go outside in the cold. Even though going outside in the cold and having a real snowball fight is very fun, if it's yucky or icy or something like that, you can make your own indoor snowballs and just throw them and have a great time. And you get to make a bunch and have fun doing a craft first. So. All done if you're doing an indoor snowball fight. If you're gonna make a sheep though, we still have a couple more steps. So this is where we need to get out our sheep pieces. So we need our face right here and our googly eyes and our four little pieces of pipe cleaner to be legs. All right, I am gonna use my glue gun. If you have only glue dots to work with, we'll see how they work. I hope they work, but I don't know. So we'll see, but I am gonna use the glue gun because I have it here, because I work at the library and we have so many craft supplies, it's so much fun. So I'm just gonna take my glue gun and if you are a kid making this, make sure you have your parents' permission to do this or their help because glue guns are very, very hot. So I am just gonna just put some glue kind of on the back of my sheep's face here. And I'm kind of putting it all over because it needs to, oh, my glue stick doesn't want to go out. It needs to catch at least some of the yarn. So then I'm just gonna kind of put that toward the top of where I want it to be, sort of on the, the top of the yarn pom-pom ball here. All right, so there's a face. And I think next I'm gonna do the eyes. So I'm gonna grab my glue gun again and I'm gonna make two little eye pieces right there. Put it down so you can see better. I'm going to do one here and one here. And then I'm going to grab my little googly eyes. And this is a part that a parent should really help you with because you have to get kind of close to the glue, the hot glue, if you're using hot glue for this part. And there you go. The eyes are on. So now we have to do the legs. So you should have 
four um, little pieces like this. So I'm just going to bend. I'll show you on my other sheep. See how they're sort of bent and they make kind of a curled up foot? So I'm going to do that on each of my little legs here. Just curling it up. It's hard to see because I'm wearing black. <laughs> Not a very good background for a black leg, is it? And then I'm going to do the same thing. Just curl it up on the other the other legs. So, one, two, three, and four. All right, so now you've got your leg that looks almost like a music note. Do you know what a music note looks like? It sort of looks like that. And then we are going to glue them into our sheep. So with these, I am gonna glue the actual pipe cleaner so then I can stick it up into the yarn. So I'm just gonna glue, throw some hot glue all over this and I don't have to get my fingers anywhere near the hot glue this time, so that's nice. So I'm gonna put this one, I'm just gonna stick it in toward the back. This is gonna be one of my back legs. There's one, and then I'm gonna put another one even here in the back, so let's get another little leg here. And we can put that up somewhere in here. How's that? Just like that. So then we have our two back legs. The nice thing about hot glue is that it dries really quickly. So we can probably even stand up our little guy by the end of this program. So then we have the two front legs to do. So again, just gluing the top of the leg here. Being very careful not to drip any on yourself. And we're going to put that more toward the front and I just am pushing it in so that it finds a good holding place. There we've got three legs. All right one more to go and our sheep is almost done. Wouldn't it be fun to make other animals the same way? You could make so many different kinds of animals. All right and the last one I'm going to put right in here. Just push it in there pretty hard, not super hard because you don't want to bend the leg, but hard enough to make it stick and I have hot glue everywhere. All right, our sheep is done. He looks super fun. What do you think? Did you guys make it? Uh, if you made the sheep along with me or if you're going to make it later, I would love to see a picture of how your sheep came out. Fun little, a fun little friend that you can keep with you on your desk or near your bed. Super cute. And if you use hot glue, this stuff should stay in and you can, I've, I've actually dropped this guy or this one that I made earlier. I've actually dropped this one a few times. So they're pretty sturdy if you use hot glue. So I'm not going to put them on his feet just yet because I don't want them to come off. The hot glue is still drying. So while I wait for that, I have a quick story to read to you guys if you want to stick around and listen. And it's a story about a sheep, and I think it's really fun. So I wanted to share it with you. It's called Wolber. Oh, Wolber. So I forgot to tell you, this book was published by HarperCollins. So thank you to HarperCollins for letting us read this book. And if you're interested in seeing a book about more sh with more information about sheep, um, we have this beautiful book called Beautiful Sheep. And this one has the most beautiful pictures of sheep. I, I love sheep. I have gotten to go to, not this year, but many, many years, I've gotten to go to the um, Hopkinton State Fair and pet sheep. And it's one of my favorite things because they're so friendly and their wool feels so interesting. It's like, soft but also kind of hard it's it, it's I can't really explain <gasps> you have two bulbers at your house day family that is awesome oh my goodness lucky you are they sweet just like the ones at the fair that I've seen I just think there's look at these pictures they're so cute and I don't think I've seen one with horns before that's kind of cool so anyway this is a book that you oh I guess I have seen them with horns <laughs> I've seen one like this this is a book that you can check out at the library. We have it in our children's room. We also have one called Beautiful Cows, if you really like cows too. 
So our sheep is all ready to stand on his feet. They're all, um, the glue is all dry. So even though this one is two different tones of white, which you can probably see, he'll sit happily in my, on my desk or in the children's room. And then I also made these ahead of time. These are the, just the plain snowballs if you just wanna make snowballs. So that's our craft for today. Thank you so much for doing this craft with me. Don't forget, we still have a couple of kits here at the library if you would like to come pick them up and make a sheep or some snowballs of your own. Let's see, what other programs do we have this week? Um, so Wednesday and Thursday, we have story time at 10 o'clock. Gail will be reading new stories on Wednesday and I will be reading stories on Thursday. We're gonna read pizza stories this week on Thursday. And then next week, Gail on Monday, Gail will be doing a fun, um, food craft. That one is going to be avalanche cookies and they'll be green. So in sometime either today or tomorrow, Gail will have kits to hand out if you would like to make avalanche cookies. I believe they do have peanut butter in them. So if you have a peanut butter allergy, you might want to stay away from at least that part of the craft, but you can always get the kit and then um, use your own kind of sun butter or whatever it is that, that you can use that's not peanuts. So Anyway, that will be next Monday at 3 or 3.30, and Gail will have kits ready this week. So thank you for joining me, and um, I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.